Do you want the guide to be an MK Mobile Pro farming over a thousand souls every single day? along with how you can obtain new characters maxed out. Classic Rain, Classic Movie Raiden, Ace of Knaves Joker, MK11 Rain, MK11 Shang Tsung, MK11 Noob Saibot, the list goes on and on. Well, I'm gonna teach you in this video how you can be a farming expert playing the best game modes to actually get the souls you need. 50,000, 80,000, 100,000, endless souls you can stockpile to your liking so let's get started first off in mk mobile we have our dailies go into the card shop go to the free offers and go to the free rewards and watch all 10 of those ads because you have a chance to get a random gold silver or bronze card and with that random gold you can get a brand new character like lizard noob lizard baraka and Next up, they even Lizard Jade from that. The next thing you want to open is the Bronze Pack in the Card Pack selection. It's over at the bottom and it's free. The next thing after that is in the Special Offers. If you scroll, there's a Daily Pack, which is also free. Make sure to claim all of these dailies. They are just free rewards that you can claim every single day. Here is my account. Fully maxed out. Everything you could ever imagine all maxed and if we go to my equipment same story everything you could ever imagine all there but how do you do that the first step to getting a maxed account is to start as a beginner i'm going to cover the tutorial here if you just downloaded this game and you own a copy of mk11 only if you own a copy of mk11 and you haven't used your console link code yet I would definitely do that first because you get a significant amount of souls and a free MK11 character to start off with. But if you didn't do that, then you're going to have to just start out with some quests and you'll have the first one unlocked and you just got to go down the list because it'll be pretty easy when you first start off. Uh, but the difficulty gets hard, so eventually the second one will unlock. Just keep unlocking them at your own pace and eventually you'll get up to 10, but that will be much later on. Once you earn enough souls, the pack you want to open first is this one. This is the gold pack. As a beginner with zero golds, zero diamonds, you need to start with this pack. It is incredible. The chance is 100% of course, and it's 150 souls for a guaranteed gold card. Get enough of these and complete this game mode right here, battle mode. Complete this to max. It won't take you very long. It's a, just a nice free game mode, very easy. And no challenge, no difficulty. They even give you characters to play, usually. So once you complete battle mode, you'll have enough souls to keep opening up packs. What you need to be careful of is this pack right here, the challenge pack. Do not open this pack. It is not worth it under any circumstance. 300 souls is a very significant increase because if you just go over to the Scarlet MK11 pack, you'll see it's 400 souls with the gold challenge character chance built into it, plus three diamonds, two of them being one of the best diamonds in the game. Scorpion and Sub-Zero are both extremely important for a late game and when you actually build your first diamond team. So you should definitely open this pack after you're done with um, the gold pack. And that is the goal with the gold pack. You want to max out your gold cards, the regular ones, and then move on to the MK11 Scarlet version because then you have a chance to get MK11 Scorpion. Once you get a copy of Scorpion, you can stop pulling on this pack. What you wanna focus on next is this pack. This pack is one of the best packs in the game. It has over 20% chance of getting a diamond, and they're all good. Cabal's pretty decent, Jade's amazing, Circle Shadows Jax Briggs is pretty good as well. Kung Lao, Liu Kang, Injustice 2 Raiden, Classic Raiden, Hellspawn Scorpion, Cold War Scorpion, you get the drift. There's just tons of great diamonds in this pack, and the price isn't very expensive, it's only 450. The only drawback to this pack is that it only contains a character, no level ups, no equipment, and that is the biggest issue. I wouldn't go for these packs either, just because first off they're limited and these characters are just 
not that interesting. For 150, you'd rather just take the chance of getting them. How do you get enough souls to do all of that? Well, let's go back to quest mode. Remember when I said to unlock a few of these towers first, right? Once you unlock the fifth tower for quest mode and you scroll down here, you'll see one hour quests. Now, what's so significant about one hour quests? Well, they're the best quests in the game. Find one with a medium difficulty. I wouldn't go for the very high or hard difficulty. Stick to medium or easy for the one hour quests, uh, as a beginner at least, because then you can actually do it. You might not have a good enough characters early on. But this, this is the best quest to do in MK Mobile. 13 souls per hour. Now with the new repeat quest feature, which I'll show off, let's go only sort by silvers and golds and bronze characters so we can show off just how easy it is to actually do these. Okay, so most of these characters don't have boosts actually. But if we find some characters, yeah, some silver characters with boosts here, what is this uh, bonus? Well, it's if you drag it in there, it's going to raise you up to almost 100%. If you have the silver card maxed out, even if he's fusion level like zero, you put three 30s in here and it's going to be 90%. No matter what fusion your character is. So take advantage of these boosts that they give you early on for one hour quests. But if I go here and I click start, it's so easy for beginners now because there is a repeat quest feature. I'm going to skip the quest. Don't ever do this. But once your quest is completed, you'll see in the bottom left hand corner, you can just click a simple button. And there you go. Everything you had set up is just right in there. And one click of a button. You need to check your phone every hour and just do this. I know it sounds redundant and repetitive. If you can't check your phone every hour, try a four hour quest. The reason one hour quests are the best is because of statistics. If you do a one day quest, you are guaranteed 30 souls. But if you do a one hour quest, you are guaranteed 13 souls. Now the amount is less, but you have to factor in that it's one hour. If you checked your phone for at least 16 hours in a full day and got eight hours of sleep, that is still 208 souls. So instead of getting 30 souls, you're getting 208. Now, if you times that by three, because you're doing three of these a day, that is 624 souls, which means if you were able to check your phone every hour for 24 hours, if you set an alarm clock for it, you could get up to 1,000 souls in just one day. That's not even factoring in all the other ways you could earn souls throughout the day. So you can get that amount higher up than 600 without having to just do quests. Also, side note, when you go to sleep, set an eight hour quest so that you get eight hours of sleep. Now, if you normally only get four or six hours of sleep, you can set a four hour quest and then do some one hour quests. However you think is best to match your sleep schedule, you still need to at least fill your day with many one hour quests, which just, like I said, aren't that difficult to do since you can just click the little repeat button in the bottom left corner of the screen. But that just puts it into terms how you can actually get this many souls without spending money on these offers. No one will ever spend money on these. Come on. Okay. Besides quests, what's some other ways to actually earn souls? We got challenges. Challenges have two ways to earn souls. This stage right here, which is just coins. And then also this stage right here. For challenges, you just want to do as much as you can. If you're opening up gold packs every single day, uh, eventually you have enough golds to complete a normal difficulty or a hard difficulty. It, it shouldn't be very challenging to do normal and hard. But... Elder does require more characters to be maxed out. So you might not be able to do the Elder difficulty, but Normal and Hard will guarantee you 35 and 50 souls at least for the first half, and then um, the Hard also gives you more. So as a beginner, you probably should stay away from this pack because it's 502 souls. But late game, you want to start maxing out or getting copies of Rain, Noob Saibot, and Shang Tsung only buy this pack when it is discounted to at least 502 souls. Alright, that's when you're going to save the most amount. 
when does this pack come back, Kude? When can I open this pack? So this pack in particular usually drops on Black Friday, Christmas, and New Year's Eve. Black Friday is in November, Christmas is in December, and New Year's Eve is the end of December. New Year's Eve is a new discount celebration because they didn't do it in the couple of years prior. But this year they celebrated it with three packs that were discounted, including a discount on the Scarlet MK11 pack, which was pretty dang cool. But it was only limited to 20, so kind of kind of iffy on that one. So that's how you obtain Noob Saibot, Shang Tsung, and MK11 Rain, three of the brand new characters and some of the most sought after characters. As beginners, I see a lot of people wanting to get a copy of one of these three, specifically Shang Tsung and Noob though. Rain has kind of fallen off ever since he's no longer the new character he used to be. In this pack, you'll see a gold character card chance, which is 85%. This can include every single gold in the game besides Slasher Jason. And why is this a big deal? <laughs> why? Because that includes new golds, Lizard Noob Saibot, Lizard Baraka, Classic Shang Tsung, all characters I see a lot of beginners want to just get one copy of. I've seen a lot of people open just one of these packs, just one, and getting a copy of Shang Tsung, Lizard Noob Saibot, Lizard Baraka. So I think at some point you could just risk it and open up one or two, maybe even three of these pack, uh, but only do it when it's at least 502 discounted. Don't go for it at 750 souls. That's way too much. This pack though, this pack is highly recommended for beginners. It's it's sort of new by the way. This hasn't been around for very long, uh, but it is a staple for beginners now. You guys have it so easy with the Comic Cup team at least, because look at this pack. Like look at the chances here. Gold Combat Cup Johnny Cage, as a beginner, He's one of the best characters in the game. You also have a 5% chance of getting a diamond character, and this can include every diamond in the game. Joker, Classic Movie Raiden, MK11 Rain, Classic Rain, every diamond you could think of, just not the newest one, which right now is MK11 Liu Kang. So go for the Combat Cup pack as a beginner. Definitely go for this pack. This pack also comes out around Black Friday, Christmas, and maybe New Year's Eve next year. But these two are the packs I wanted to talk about. There are more packs in this game, but I just wanted to focus on the most important ones as a beginner, because this isn't really a guide for late game having, you know, Fusion 8 or Fusion 9 diamonds. This is about starting off and wanting to get to this point, which is gonna take you so long, all right? This isn't gonna be something you can do in a week or a month, not even a year. This may take you many years to, uh, to achieve, like even getting just a few max diamonds. Um, it's hard. It is hard nowadays. Besides getting lucky on packs, what's another way to actually achieve diamonds? Towers. Towers are very important. Now, there's two types of towers. This might confuse a new player. White Lotus Tower Normal and White Lotus Fatal are both new towers. What does that mean? They were added in this update. And next update, there's going to be a new tower again. Normal and Fatal. What you're looking for as a beginner is a repeat tower. A repeat tower is repeating an older tower in the game. It could just be any tower from the update before. A few examples are Shorayu Tower, Edenian Tower, Lin Kuei Tower, Tower of Horror... And you want to focus on those towers because they will be much, much easier than these new towers. But at some point, you do need to tackle at least one of these. And as a beginner, focus on the normal because fatal is incredibly difficult for beginners. You need to have at least a few of the most uh, sought after or recommended golds first before you can complete the fatal tower i do not think you can do it at fusion level zero or three so four towers here's a few teams that you want to consider so we first got this team here this team is kind of a classic standard here combo cup johnny cage is an incredible fighter incredible he power drains on sp attack one 
It's very important because you want to set up a talent tree around that. Now I'm going to talk about talent trees later on in the video, but for now we're just going to go over characters. Combo Cup Sonya Blade can forcefully tag out an opponent and then the AI cannot tag that person back in until they kill you, pretty much. It doesn't ever wear off. Classic Ermac is a boss killer. He siphons their health constantly throughout the entire game. Unfortunately, with the addition of White Lotus Tower, they reduced all negative effects for you that go against the opponent because the tower equipment reduces negative effect duration. Let me give you an example. So poison, poison won't last as long, fire won't last as long, and then this siphon won't last as long, which nerfs Ermac just slightly. And next tower, I hope it isn't like that, which will make this team a lot better. But there are many more teams to go over. So this is the second team. In the future, these characters may get their own soul packs. So right now having them unlocked at Fusion Level X is insane but maybe in the future, uh, this may not be so crazy. I mean, think about it. People have the classic team fully maxed out with the golds uh, because there were so many packs for them. But having a look at this team, the reason why it's so good is because Lizard Baraka is an incredible fighter. Lizard Noob Sabat can bring anyone back to life on your team. And Lizard Jade is able to reflect so many debuffs and all that stuff back onto the opponent. Incredible, incredible stuff. So this is one of my highly recommended tower teams if you actually have these characters. But the Triborg team also is stunning. Cyrax, Cyrax will just boost your critical hit chance, basically increasing your damage on any character. Not just, not just Triborg characters, any characters in general. So the Cyborg team is one of the strongest and has been since when they uh, were first released. This is a highly recommended tower team here. Then we have this team. So Classic Scorpion gets buffed by Cyrax, and then he can just pretty much uh, keep attacking the opponent. Now, Classic Scorpion is also an incredible fighter. He keeps bringing back the lowest health person on the team back into the game and doing damage to them constantly. It's very helpful and does a lot of damage because he can cause bleed. He isn't as effective against boss characters though, because boss characters cannot be hurt by dots. Next up, Slasher Jason. I'm not really sure what the best team for him is, but he's just an incredible character. He's found in the Nightmare Jason pack. So definitely go for the Nightmare Jason pack if you can, uh, because he will be in there with like a 10% chance. So just get one copy of Slasher Jason, just one, and you can keep spamming bleed on SP attack one over and over and over again. In fact, I, wait, every single, yeah, every single one has bleed. That's funny. And he also rises twice. <laughs> nice. Another good beginner team for towers is Gunslinger Aaron Black, and I paired him up with Cyrax and Classic Ermac. Now, realistically, Gunslinger Aaron Black is just already a good character by himself, but there is a new uh, White Lotus Tower gear. Uh, I can't edit the gear from this preset, uh, but the White Lotus Tower gear, let me go to it. We're looking for these two gears. Skugami's Demon Fire at Fusion Level 0 and this gear at Fusion Level 0. Paired up with each other, you can constantly get your SP2 and spam it. And with a gear that gives you health back for damage you've just dealt to the opponent, you can spam his SP attack 2 over and over and over and over again in an endless loop, destroying the opponents. Now this is amazing against the White Lotus Tower boss. However, when the tower is no longer White Lotus, it's going to be a little worse because there's no, not going to be a boost in damage anymore. And that is something as a beginner you have to take into consideration. So every tower has tower gear for it. 
White Lotus Tower has White Lotus Tower gear equipment. And if I go to the equipment, you see there's a damage boost and it only applies to White Lotus Tower. If I use this in Shurayu, I use this in Twisted Tower, Classic Tower, it's not going to work. This damage boost here will be nullified. That's important to note. So you need to use tower gear you got from this tower. When you first start this game, fight and quit. All right, click the fight button and press quit. Just keep doing that and use your five attempts every single day. Because even losing, you still have a chance to pull an epic, a rare, and a common piece. You even have a chance to pull a random uh, support, equipment, some upgrade special cards. You just want to make sure uh, that you lose some games here. Uh, and once you're actually able to play the White Lotus normal, then you can grind your way up. And when you get stuck, make sure not to waste your attempts. Just quit. Quit, quit, quit. Do not refresh if you're going to be spamming the quit button, though. Lastly, we have this team. This team is really good against Battle 184 because Classic Kano is a, it's an un overlooked card. He's a great, great support, fighter, everything you can think of. And Johnny Cage being paired with him is going to be nasty against those stupid evasion bosses. Classic Kano works really well against evasion characters because if you keep stunning them, they can't evade. There's no evasion when they're stunned. This is going to be one of my honorable mentions for survivor mode because I do want to go over survivor mode. Uh, it's a very difficult game mode, but this team makes it easy. At one point in time, you could complete Elder difficulty with no equipments on the entire team. Yeah. And then we have this team. Cold War is also amazing. How do you earn diamonds? So once you complete either tower, normal or fatal, you'll be guaranteed at least one diamond card. And this will have your chance to get any random diamond, including new characters. And for the fatal towers, you have two chances, one at 100 and one at 200. At 200, you get a specified character, one of these four and one of these four epics. This is important because every new tower includes the previous new character. The next tower after White Lotus will include MK11 Liu Kang, and that's how you can get your copy of the new characters. Of course, there's a catch here because it's a fatal tower. It's difficult to grind. Use your quits on both of these towers every day and grind your way up. You can do it. I believe in you. Next up, we have talents. I'm going to show off a talent preset. Let's do this one. This is a talent preset that I recommend for brutality. You have special ending, which lets you do brutality mid-match. A lot of people ask about this. This is how you do mid-match brutality. Supports. Meditation. Special 2 costing less power, bar power. And Adenian's Champion. Special 2 can cost no bar power. In some cases, you want it to be SP Attack 1. But I think these are both solid builds uh, that you can use. If you have only like 20 or 30 talent points, then I would go for these right here and a couple of these. Now, where do you earn talents? Another tower, actually. If we go to Shao Kahn's tower, this is where you can earn talent points. Right here, you want to play this tower start to finish. 0 to 100. It's pretty easy until the later stages. So you can at least get like 30 or 40 of these talent points pretty easily. And once you do that, it'll boost your account up significantly. But that is going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I hope that helps with how you can actually obtain enough souls to do it. To do it all. Look at this. Maxing out every single character. It's going to take you years, and it actually isn't possible. Wait, what, Kude? You just now mentioned that? Well, see, here's the thing. MK11 Liu Kang, just him and Lizard Jade are locked behind a paywall right now. Next update, they won't be, but then there's going to be two new characters that are locked behind a paywall, and that is something that most new players will not know or realize, uh, so I'm going to inform you now. You cannot get MK11 Liu Kang for now, 
unless you spend $10 for a 20% chance. And next update, whatever the new character ends up being, you will also not be able to get them uh, right away. You'll have to wait until the following update. Stay on alert. I hope you get lucky in your chances because this game is very chance based. I want to show that now that this game is extremely chance based. There's no guaranteed way to grind for stuff. Uh, the closest way to guaranteed grind for stuff is the Fatal Tower because you have that four characters being specified, but it's still not enough in my opinion if you if you really want that chance of getting just one of the characters you want. Let me just give a big shout out to my YouTube members. We have NNA Blaster, Ghosty XL, SSSSS, Noxon, Depos, Hamath, 3WPS, Grim, Plain Punch, Poppy Garcia Official, Devil, Stefano, Presh GG, Protax Has, Ali Imran, Karin, Metal Crab 3001, Jeff, BB, The Mist, Frenzo, Xarez, Damien, Shadow Sparkles, Jewful Candle, Friendly Guy with the Spurger, Jeremy, Grimmer Mia, Overkill 80, Fitz Magic, Massive Cool, Rosislav, Siege of Empire, Random, Seven Sane, Fierce Wolf, and MK Fire. Thank you guys all for being YouTube members. And yeah, peace out.